Oh, good morning to you. How are you doing? <laughs> well, looking at your backdrop, I'm suddenly incredibly triggered. How are you? <laughs> oh, that's what I, I was saying. I'm live from Tribal Council. I'm doing amazing. Have you had Have you had a chance to have your morning coffee yet? That's the true question. I don't know if you've been asked that yet. I have not been asked that, but also um, I have not drunk coffee in four years unless okay. it's in an espresso martini. Then I make an exception. But it has to be in martini form. Absolutely. Okay, I respect that. See, I'm not a coffee drinker myself. So if there's a way that I could get into the coffee trend, like and mm -hmm. can wake up in the mornings a little easier, that would help out a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the show. Welcome. I feel you got to bear with me. I'm a little nervous because I'm not used to having professional journalists on the show. So I kind <laughs> of feel under pressure here. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I feel like Angelie is going to be like, Let, let's see what his journalistic skills are. So I'm a little nervous today. Okay. That's exactly what I will do because I'm really <laughs> nasty like that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can't wait. You're, you're going to have to let me know how I do at the end of the end of the show here, but we got to get right into it because we don't have much time together. I know you're very, very busy today. First off, love seeing you out there. Uh, for myself and other fans perspective, you know, we want to go on, we want to compete on the show of Survivor. What was it like just to kind of hop off that truck, take your first couple steps on that mat, see JLP across the way and realize, wow, we're, we're actually about to begin. Um, it's the most terrifying feeling ever. Um, it's just because, you know, you, you got to think, well, what, what kind of sadist has sat there? What's the most painful thing I can put these people through? And you don't know who that person is or what their, what their, you know, psyche's like. It's like, how crazy is this going to be? And even when it looks innocent, like they're the worst ones, the ones that look innocent. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Believe me. And then you see JLP's hideous face. And <laughs> it's just like the terror just like goes through you. Um, it's it's just it's a an absolutely petrifying experience and but, we still sign up yeah. for it every year absolutely <laughs> and, you know it's like as soon as you hop off that truck and you see him and you see the challenges and you go oh it is now officially too late to call in sick um i've just got to do this <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah could you imagine like uh what did i sign up for here let me get back on yeah. the truck while yeah. I drive away <laughs> but I mean, how did this survivor journey get started for you? What made you go, you know what? I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do this. So I'm a um, get out there and do this kind of person. Um, okay. I never say no to opportunities, you know, and because um, I think that life is all about experiences and stories and sharing them. And I, I guess I just have more than most because I do keep getting these opportunities. But I just don't say no to them because I don't ever want to be that person who, um goes I'm too afraid to do it so I'm just going to say no and then after it goes away you sit there and go what if I'd have just done it at least I'd then I'd know um so it got started for me um kind of in a similar way to I did Real Housewives of Melbourne and um which was hideous and um it prepared you right it had to prepare you really did. <laughs> <laughs> I've already done the most disgusting nasty sadistic tv how bad can survive <laughs> be um and so when i was approached for both both shows they're not something that i ever thought would be in my life ever um but i'm so glad i said yes to both of them because even though i i hated doing housewives um certainly the crap that i pulled on there got me survivor so it's you know, good things have come from something that was really nasty. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just a yes person when when those opportunities walk through the door. Do you believe that your time on Real Housewives, do you believe your time on that show got you the persona of being a villain and going on to the villain tribe? Do we think that carried over a little bit? Sort of. Um, I mean, definitely. If you are a woman and you're smart and funny and accomplished, you're automatically a villain. Then you stir into the mix, my accent. What else is I going to be? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that had to be a little weird. That's the biggest thing that I'm thinking. If I went on the show, what would it be like if they went, Randy, you know, we're going to put you as a villain. You're definitely a villain. It had to be like a weird feeling that had to be like, 
awesome. I'm going out there to be on this amazing show, but at the same time, ouch, that kind of hurts a little bit. <laughs> no, I loved it. So um, when I was cast, um, I was told, would you like to know what the season is? I was like, yes, I would like to know what the season is. And I said, of it's course, zero yeah. And I said, oh, don't you dare make me a hero. Oh, how <laughs> boring would that be? Oh, my God. No, it's like, no, you are absolutely a villain. So I know that others on the Villains Tribe, um, some of them weren't particularly happy. They would have preferred to have been um, classed as heroes. But I couldn't think of anything worse. And I loved being a villain. That's It's not even a role that I play. It's literally who I am in life. <laughs> You know I mean, I mean, yeah, I, you think about some of the most recognizable Survivor players over the years, it's it's the villains. So, yeah. I mean, like every time you quoted that kind of saying like, oh, how boring. Like I was like, I, she's right. She's uh, <laughs> she's actually right. So before we get into the gameplay side of things, I, I first have to say your cat has left the screen now, but I absolutely adore your Thank cat. You. Thank you. That's just <laughs> yeah. one of them. Um, so this is here he is. Ah, hello. Cousin. Hello. Hi. Um, and his twin brother Astro is down there. <laughs> oh, res respect for the black cats. I had two black cats myself. So, I, you know, you got to have them, love them. I just had to point that out. I'm like, I know most people are talking about the gameplay and everything, but I'm like, well, let's give some recognition to the cats. Absolutely. And what other color cat is a villain supposed to have? Oh, fits right in, fits right into the thing. So <laughs> let's get into this um, kind of the gameplay that took place here the first couple of days for you. So we saw the villains right off the bat kind of struggled a little bit in that first challenge. Uh, and and then later on in the immunity challenge, why do you think the heroes were working better than the villains were? Uh, Sean. <laughs> yeah. One word. Easy, easy, <laughs> easy answer. Okay, next question. No. <laughs> I mean, when you have someone like Sean, I mean it's it's gonna be easier for you to compete in challenges. Oh, seriously. Oh my god. He's just like hop straight over this like nine meter wall. I'm five foot two. That wall was the scariest looking thing. Oh my god, I'm sorry, how am I getting that then? Um, so but I think also um they were just a bit more. I don't know why or how particularly, because we'd only really just met, how they were a bit more sort of united um, in in their strategy, in their strategy on that challenge. Um, the second one, I don't necessarily think that we would have lost if we'd have had our full cash of mm, this. Yeah, you were down two people. I mean, that had to be tough, yeah. Considering how close behind we were um with two players down I actually think we probably would have won that challenge it was just really really unfortunate oh I could definitely see it. I mean I saw the heroes kind of running away and then once you got to the sticks and I, I can't remember who it was that just kind of went through all of them at once who was it Simon that's that's what I thought I'm, I'm like wow they might actually be able to do this even though they're down two members right now yeah. we saw early on at camp when you guys were kind of forming alliances building the shelter we saw George kind of pick you out right away and like I've got my girls by me I got Jackie I got Angeli we're good golden were was there anyone else at camp that you were kind of connecting with that maybe we didn't see and you had talks of hey let's work together moving forward and what was the dynamic like at the villain tribe um, so I, I was really getting on with Sarah. Um, I like her a lot. She's, you know, she's a great chick. And she said to me in the beginning, she was like, I actually think you're going to be like my mom in this. Um, and I was like, sure. Like if I had a really <laughs> cool blonde white daughter, it would be you. <laughs> um, but I think because the Jackie George Angeli Alliance was formed so quickly and they are such powerful returning players, there wasn't really a chance for anybody else to kind of crack that group that we mm. had, although we'd only just gotten to know each other. Um, it wasn't it wasn't like, oh, you know, form an alliance with me, form an alliance with me, I think with any of us. It was fairly obvious that we were, the three of us were like in it together. Um, and it was just so lovely that George and Jackie decided between themselves that they would protect me and that, you know, we would all be in this together. Um, I mean, George is absolutely hilarious. I was going to say, just, if, if he comes calling your name, like, hey, work with me, how do you not gravitate towards yeah. who is King George? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And he's King George for a reason. Um, and, you know, with Jackie, obviously Jackie and I were, 
And when they pulled me aside at first, they said, oh, just so you know, it's, it's always the older woman who gets voted off first. And I was like, gosh, how fascinating. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> oh, right, right. So Jackie was um, a little bit older than me. So, of course, when they both had the sheer inconsiderate audacity to end up horrifically maimed in hospital. How dare they? <laughs> yeah. Completely exposed, standing on that beach in front of all those people with no knickers. So it was kind of obvious what would happen when these two very powerful people just got taken out of the game. I'm by myself. And by then, other alliances had been formed and it just felt like a very lonely place. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I'm like, I'm sitting there and watching the strategy strategy excuse me break down as we're about to head the tribal council and i i was feeling for you i'm like okay angeline knows what she's doing you're you're a very smart woman i'm like you can kind of see the writing on the wall so i am interested we saw that you were the target kind of right off the bat you know if we can't get them out we don't know if they're going to be showing up then let's target angeline because of how close she is with king george but i know they were telling you steve which could have been you know I'm like, yeah, I could see that. You know, that's a believable story. Was it only Steve? Because I know at Tribal Council, JLP kept talking about, oh, it's a unanimous vote. That's what we're hearing. So was it honestly, Steve, that was the plan that you were hearing? Was there any other plans out there that we didn't hear about? And how confident were you that it was actually going to be Steve or in, deep inside were you like, it's probably going to be me? I mean, it was all very disorganized and chaotic because at first um, everybody was saying Mimi. And mm. then um, there were a few saying Michael, and I was definitely on board with that. But then everything changed um, because I think it was Simon who said, um, let's let's get Stevie out. Um, and of course, everybody does what Simon says. Um, and I believe <laughs> And... Um, yeah, I mean, they were saying to my face, it's like, Angela, you've got nothing to worry about, babes. Everyone loves you, babes. You're fine. Don't worry that George and Jackie aren't here. <laughs> I, I, little uh, parents. I mean, you even said it in a oh. confessional. You were like, how can I trust these people? Absolutely. I know you can't. You can't. We're, we're villains. <laughs> can you trust <laughs> no, I was going to say, fits the mold perfectly. <laughs> I just... I have to ask, though, this final tribal council, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it because JLP, I'm, I'm sure that you've been asked this a million times, but JLP sits there and he says, OK, you guys have an option. So unfortunately, Jackie's injury, she can't come in the game, which was already hard to hear. But then it's like you guys could go back for the night, take the night off, or we can go ahead and read these votes. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, this is a no brainer. But you guys, you villains are like, oh, we got let's just do it anyways. Who cares? And I'm sitting here as a gameplay tactic. You guys are about to go down two members, possibly three, because we don't know what's going on with George. And, you know, he's still being reevaluated. So what was all it would take is one person to say, no, let's not do it because it had had to be unanimous. So what what happened? Why did the villains really want to go through with it? Ah, let's just vote someone off anyways. So this really comes down to my masterful powers of persuasion, because what wasn't really shown, but it was huge and it lasted for ages, was that nobody wanted to read the votes except me, because um, and so I convinced all of them to do it. Um, and my thinking was, you know, um, we we don't we all let sort of trot off back into camp into the sunset and pretend none of this ever happened it's that's like, boring it's a <laughs> we need to boring play to the heroes they got that completely covered villains we take risks we live dangerously we grab life by the bollocks it's like come on and you know when it comes down to it this is tv and let's make some damn good TV. And Jonathan was like, but Angeli, what if it's you? <laughs> and I said, well, then the bigger the drama. Come on, let's do this. And sure enough, I was completely right. Look at the drama. This is a TV personality, people, who knows how to put on a show. Because I was going to say, you stole the words right out of my mouth. I'm like, at the very least, it was a very entertaining start to the season. It was amazing. I mean, it, it would have been kind of a letdown if it was just like, uh, no vote tonight. Let's just go back to camp. But now we're all here. We're all talking. We're all like, wow, this block. And it's going to be remembered forever. So, like, I'm sure production loved it. 
Um, they were very unhappy, but oh. our EP did say to me, um, you are hands down the greatest first boot in Survivor history. Um, and that means everything to me. It's like, okay, so what you're saying is I did everything that I was supposed to do, except I just did it in one episode super efficiently. And where are the ratings highest? Episode one and episode 24. Ta-da! Amazing. So remember, it's like if you go down, just don't go down kicking and screaming, go down making people laugh and remembering you. And if I manage to convince people around the world how to correctly pronounce my name, then... Did I get it right? Now, now you have me questioning. Oh, see? Oh, see? Perfect. See? I know. <laughs> my, my last question, uh, and once again, thank you so much for joining us today. It's You're an amazing person. I would love to see you play again, but I do want to know on your side of things, first off, would you play again? And secondly, we like to look past the game and your time on the show. What are you going to take away from this, you know, once in a lifetime experience to go out there and play one of the greatest games on earth? So in terms of would I do it again, um, I sort of look at it like childbirth. Um, Straight after it, you go, Oh, I'm not sure I want to do that again. Super oh. painful. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, but the drugs were great. <laughs> um, but then, I've never uh, heard it like that before. And that's, I'm going to start using that. I'm sorry, but I will give you credit every <laughs> single time. You're going to have to pay me royalties for that one. Ah, okay. But then, you know, a little bit further down the track, you go, you know what? I think I would do that again. Um, and so, as I said, I never say no to an opportunity and it was such an honor to have been approached and asked to play the greatest scariest game on earth um so yeah i can't see myself saying no if you know i'm like a russian sleeper agent now i'm just like waiting for the bat phone to ring oh i i I think you'll be back i have a feeling (laughs) angeli rao everybody did i say the last name right too it's rao right perfect perfect yes it rhymes with wow (laughs) That's that's actually how I remembered. I was like, rhymes with wow. I got it. Oh, wow with an R. You. But thank you so much. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day and would love to speak with you again sometime. Absolutely. I look forward to it.